All right, y'all. Uh, so we are going to um, go through test six, lesson three notes, and I am going to uh, do something. I will post the actual key to all this as well um, in your Canvas. But um, if you're going to notice on the first page here, okay, on our first page here, all of these are our definitions of our intermediate value theorem, or IVT as we call it, EVT, Rolls theorem that we talked about uh, the day before this, and then the mean value theorem as well, okay? So what I'm going to do just real quick uh, to save some time on the video part of this um, is I'm just going to go through, I've already filled these in on mine, uh, and so I'm just going to talk about them here, and then you can go and pull up our note template uh, to fill these in yourself later um, because they've all been talked about already. Um, we're just kind of applying these in the notes for today. Okay. All right. So intermediate value theorem. So this is the one that's the furthest f that we've learned long ago. All right. If f of x is continuous on the closed interval a, b, f of a is less than y is less than f of b, or f of b is less than y is less than f of a, then there is at least one value of c on a, b such that f of c equals y. Okay. So we talked about that uh, a while back. Um, that y is going to between, be between f of a and f of b. Um, and then we went to the extreme value theorem. Uh, f of x is continuous on a, b. Then there must be an absolute max and an absolute min on a, b. Those absolute extrema occur at x equals a, x equals b, or any critical value on a, b. And that's supposed to be any critical value of f on a, b. All right, and then Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem are the newest ones for us. So f of x is continuous on AB and differentiable on AB. Remember, continuous on the closed interval AB, but differentiable on open AB because we're not differentiable at our endpoints. And f of A equals f of B. Then there's guaranteed a value of C on AB such that f prime of C equals zero. So remember, that is where our SOT, slope of our tangent line, equals zero. Because remember, f prime of that number is our slope of the tangent line. So where f prime of c equals zero, so our SOT equals zero for Rolle's theorem. And then down here, the mean value theorem. So Rolle's theorem is kind of a, um, we talked about how it's just a more limited part of the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem is a little bit more broad. So f of x is continuous on closed AB and differentiable on AB. Then there's guaranteed to exist a value of c on AB such that f prime of c equals f of a minus f of b over a minus b. So basically remember, this is what this is our SOT we just talked about from right here. Okay, F prime of C is our SOT, and this is our slope of our secant. So you're guaranteed here to have a value of C where the slope of your tangent equals the slope of your secant. All right. All of them, that's why it's highlighted here, all four of these have continuous. Okay, continuity is a must for all of these. Differentiability is only a must for roles and mean value. Okay, so again, you can go refer to your notes, uh, the module where we have this actually filled in, a screenshot of that, to copy all of this in on your notes. But basically, this is just a review for you. Okay, so to save time, I'm not going to write them all out again on this video. All right, so then we're going to come down here and we're going to talk about example number one. So example number one says, the rate at which water flows out of a pipe in gallons per hour is given by a differentiable function r of time t. The table below shows the rate as measured every three hours for 24 hours. Okay, so a couple things you're going to notice, and I, because this is already filled in, I'd already written this here. Okay, gallons per hour is our rate here. Okay, gallons per hour is a rate. And we do want to notice that it does flow out of the pipe at that rate. Okay, it does tell me here it is given by a differentiable function. So we know it is differentiable, R, of time t. All right, so we're going to use this table of values to answer all of the questions on example one. Okay, so I'm going to try to fit this under here, and we'll kind of move it as we go. Well, I'll put it like this. Okay. All right, so we're using this value. Pardon the bells. Okay, we're using this uh, table to answer the questions here. Okay, so estimate the value of R prime of 5 indicating correct units of measurement, and explain what this value means about R of T. All right, we're going to start by finding R prime of 5, okay? And we're going to do that by using the points that we have around 5, okay? So we're going to have to use the 3 and the 6, okay? So R prime of 5 is going to equal 
oh, I'm sorry, it's approximation, because we're making the approximation here. R of three minus R of six over three minus six. And we're just gonna continue from there. So R of three we see is 10.4. R of six is 10.8 divided by three minus six is gonna give me negative 0 0.4 over negative three, which is approximately 0 0.1333. And it says correct units of measure. All right, so we know that our R function here was already gallons per hour. Okay, so that was a rate. And then whenever we do the derivative of that, we're adding another unit of time. So it's gonna be gallons per hour per hour which is going to be gallons per hour squared. Okay, so there is our approximation, okay, of R prime five. And then it says explain what this means. Well, the first thing I'm gonna notice is that this is a positive value. Okay, and since we know that water is flowing out of the pipe and that's a positive value, we can say that since R prime of five is greater than zero, the rate at which water is flowing out of the pipe at T equals five is increasing. Okay, so we found the value, the approximate value of R prime of five. And then we interpreted what that meant. All right, using correct units of measure, again, find the average rate of change of R of T from T equals three to T equals 18. So remember, average rate of change, I'm gonna abbreviate that for, with a rock. okay? going to be R of 3 minus R of 18 over 3 minus 18. And we have those values. So R of 3 is 10.4. R of 18 is 10.7. So 10 point R of 3, 10.7. Okay, it's using my table. Divided by negative 15 down here. And again, this is just another rate of change, so it's already the rate. So it's gonna be, again, gallons per hour squared, gallons per hour per hour. All right. Okay, so the last thing, and then we're gonna try to squeeze that right there. All right, the last thing that you're gonna see here in letter C is, is there some time, T, where T is between zero and 24, such that R prime of T equals zero and justify your answer? All right, well, we know, they did tell me that R of T is differentiable, that told me at the beginning, and we can see here that it is continuous, okay? So since, R of T is continuous and differentiable on the interval zero to 24. Okay, open, remember, because if we're differentiable, it does not have the endpoints. And if you look, R of zero is 9.6 and R of 24 is 9.6. So, and R of zero equals R of 24, which equals 9.6 then we do know that Rolle's theorem guarantees a value of t on 0 to 24 
such that r prime of t will equal zero. Example number two. The total order and shipping cost, C of X, measured in dollars of bottles of Pepsi is approximated by the function below where X is the order size in number of bottles of Pepsi in hundreds. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start right here with the fact that when it says measured in dollars, that's going to be an amount. That's not a rate. That's just an amount. Okay. It gave us an equation right here. Is there a guaranteed value of R on the closed interval 0, 3 such that the average rate of change, okay, so when I see average rate of change here, I'm thinking the slope of the secant of cost is equal to C prime of R. And right here we're thinking slope of the tangent. Okay, so the minute they ask me, is there a guaranteed value? I'm thinking about our mean value theorem. Okay, so let's look at our function up here. If you notice, okay, we gotta be continuous and differentiable. So where would, be, where would we be discontinuous here or not continuous? Okay, we know that we cannot have a value of x, zero, and negative three. Okay, x cannot be 0 or negative 3 because that would give us discontinuity. Undefined there. All right, but we're on the interval 0 to 3. Okay. You can't have a negative order size because x is the order size. So we can throw out the negative 3. So 0 is the only one we're thinking about. Okay, so... Since C of X is undefined at X equals zero, C of X is discontinuous on the closed interval zero, three. Therefore, your mean value theorem does not guarantee a value of R on the open interval 0, 3, such that C prime of R equals C of 0 minus C of 3 over 0 minus 3. Okay, you could also flip this statement. You could say um, that the mean value theorem does not guarantee a value of R on 0, 3, such that C prime of R equals C 0 minus C 3 over 0 minus 3, because C of X is undefined at X equals zero and is discontinuous on zero three. Okay, you could flip that around either way. All right, letter B. Is there a value of R on the closed interval three six such that C prime of R equals zero? Give a reason for your answer and find the value of R if such an R exists. Okay, well, we already know that it is continuous on three and six because these were the only place that was discontinuous. Okay, so we know that it's continuous All right, and C prime of R equals zero. So that right there is giving me Rolle's theorem. All right, so we're gonna find C of three and C of six. All right, so I'm gonna do that using my calculator. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna type in this equation. So Ok, 
Okay, got it in. Second quit, alpha trace, y1 of three. And then alpha trace y1 of 6. Okay, because I do want um, that to be a decimal, not a fraction, I am going to put that little decimal right there. I'm sure there's another way that I can do that uh, somewhere in my mode um, right here. Somewhere I could probably change it to where it doesn't do that. Um, make it classic. Let's see. Oh, shucks. Nope. Anyway, y'all are way better at that than I am. So let me change that back because I won't. Okay. Um, I could make it there, but nonetheless, I'm going to do it the way I was showing you. So I just did Y1 of 3 and Y1 of 6. Okay, and it gave me the same value for both of those. So C of 3 equals 8333.3333. And the same thing here. Okay, so now I can say since C of R is continuous. On 3, 6 and differentiable. on the open interval 3, 6, and C of 3 equals C of 6. Rolle's theorem guarantees a value of R on 3, 6, such that C prime of R equals 0. And now we're going to find that value. So in order to find that value, I'm going to look at the graph. Okay, and I'm going to locate my extrema. Okay, so we're going to look at our graph. Okay, so pay attention whenever I go through this because this is a little bit tricky on this graph, okay? So Y equals, I'm going to graph it. Look at what y'all would normally look at. Okay, so zoom six, right? Okay, so if I hit zoom six, you notice I don't see anything at all. Okay, and I shouldn't because if you think about it, we're up here in the 10,000. Like if I look at Y1, like we're in the 10,000s here. Okay, um, so I'm going to change my window. Let's just do our X max to be like 15,000. I'm sorry, our Y max to be 15,000. Okay. The other thing you could have done is you could have tried to zoom fit. You could have zoomed out. Um, you could have done all sorts of things. I just played around with your window here. Okay. But I do want to find my minimum value. Now, if I zoom a little bit differently here let's see let's go zero to Okay, so this is what I was trying to get to. If you zoom, if I zoom in here, you're going to see um, in my graph, it drops down here and it stays low here and then it comes back up. So my minimum is somewhere in here. Okay, so I'm going to try to find that. So second trace min, we want to be on the left-hand side of that. Okay, 
So I'm going to come back to right here where it goes back up. Then I'm going to get, try to guess right there somewhere near the center. And you're going to see it as 4.0981. Okay, so that is going to be our X value there. So our R is going to equal 4.0981. So it did ask me to find the value of R if R does exist. And I could have changed my window there to be, let's see, let's just say I did, what was it, three and six? But it's just hard to see that. Um, it looks kind of like a straight line whenever I do that way, okay? Um, oh, that's because I have 150,000 down here. So there we go, it's a little bit better here. Now you can see where it comes down and then goes back up. But you kind of play around with your window so you can see it. Um, if you hit zoom, fit, again, you'll see that it is down there. You can find it that way as well. As long as you can see what you need to see on the graph. Okay. All right. Okay, so for letter C, for the interval from 3-9, what is the greatest cost for ordering and shipping. So when I see this word right here, when I see greatest cost, okay, I'm thinking extreme value. So that's going to be our EBT. All right, so we already know C of 3 is 8. All these 3s. We already know C of 6 is 8. And all these 3s. Okay, so now we need to find C of our... R, which is going to be 4.0981. And it gives me 8213.6721. Okay, you could have found that whenever you found your minimum as well. Okay. Uh, Okay, so there's all of my values that I need. So now we know that on the interval, 3, 9, the cost is greatest when x equals 9 and its value is, and I'm going to round that to two decimal places because we're talking about cost. Okay, so when I looked over here, well, I'll be doggone if I didn't make an error here, y'all. I know I'm not supposed to do C of six, supposed to do C of nine. So I'm gonna put that one. We don't need C of six, we need C of nine. About to say, I don't even have that value over here. Okay, there we go. My bad, wrong interval. C of three and C of nine. So C of three, C of nine. And then we've got to have our, our critical point, which was 4.0981. So I did all three of those, three, nine. And then the maximum of those between 8333, 8213, and 8611 is our 8611 value. Okay. All right, so moving on to example number three. All right, example number three. A car company introduces a new car for which the number of cars sold, S, is modeled by the function below where T is the time in months. So again, looking right here, the number of cars sold is just an amount. That's not a rate, that's just an amount. Okay, so they gave me this function right here. Find the value of S prime of 2.5 using correct units to explain what this value represents in the context of this problem. Okay, so I want to take this right here and I'm going to put it in my Y1 place. So 300 
And then I want the value of its derivative at 2.5. So I can go back to my home screen. I'm going to hit math, 8. And I'm going to take the derivative of y1 at x equals 2.5. Okay, so I know that S prime of 2.5 is 133.3333 again. And that is, so it's so a rate now because we've done our derivative, okay? So that is the number of cars sold in our time is month. So cars sold per month, okay? So that is the value. And then explain what this value represents in the context of the problem. All right, so clearly that is a positive value. So since S prime of 2.5 is greater than zero, the number of cars sold at T equals 2.5 months is increasing. All right, then they want us to find the average rate of change. Oh, slope of the secant. Average rate of change is going to be the slope of the secant of cars sold over the first 12 months. Indicate the correct units of measure and explain what this value represents in the context of the problem. Okay, and real quick, just a reminder, I just didn't put it up here earlier. We are discontinuous at t equals negative two, but again, talking about time and months, so we're not gonna have a negative two months, so that's not going to uh, hinder us anywhere on our problem, okay? All right, um, so let's see, we need to do the average rate of change, so that's gonna be the slope of the sequence, so s of zero minus s of 12, divided by zero minus 12. All right, we know S of zero, so I can go back up here. Okay, so I did zero and I did 12, okay, and got those values. So S of zero is 150 minus 1307.1429 over negative 12, which is going to give me 96.4286. And now that is a rate. So it's gonna be car sold per month. Okay. And of course, interpret what this means in the context of the problem. So what does this mean? It means for the first 12 months, they sold an average of about 96 cars per month. Okay. All right. Is it possible that a value of C for 0 to 12 exists such that F prime of C is equal to the average rate of change? Give a reason for your answer. If such a value of C exists, find that value. Okay, so remember, right here. Okay, this right here is going to be our SOT, and then the average rate of change is going to be our slope of the secant, our SOS. So we want to know, are those equal? Is there a value in which they are equal? Well, let's see. We know we're continuous. We're differentiable. Therefore, MVT, MVT does guarantee that there is a value. Okay, so since 
s of t is both continuous and differentiable. Now notice I wrote those separately. So we can be closed here and open here. Okay, the MVT guarantees a value of C on the interval 0, 12, such that S prime of C equals S of 0 minus S of 12 over 0 minus 12. Okay, so we do know that it does guarantee it, and then it wants us to find that value. Okay, well, in order to find that value, okay, we are going to find our derivative. So I'm going to go back up here real quick um, because it's way easier to find my derivative if I alter this equation just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to distribute that out. So that's going to give me 1,500 minus 3 times 9 is going to give me 2,700. And then I'm going to make this t plus 2 to the negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to bring that to the top. Okay, so this is what I'm going to try to differentiate down here just because it makes it a little bit easier to differentiate it in that form. All right, so we know S of T equals 1,500 minus 2,700 times T plus 2 to the negative 1. So now we want to find the derivative of that. Okay, so 1,500 goes away. Bring that negative 1 times negative 2,700 is going to give me positive 2,700. And change my power. And always we can clean that up. So it's going to be 2,700 over t plus 2 quantity squared. All right, so we want a value of c. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm trying to calculate this, okay, is I'm going to change out my t for a c. Okay, and remember here we want the sot and the sus to be equal to each other. Okay, so here's our sot. So it's going to be 2,700 over C plus 2 squared. And we've already found the slope of the secant. Okay, we found that right up here. So I'm going to set that equal to that 96. That's our average rate of change there, 96.4286. Okay, you can do this in the calculator. Uh, or I'm going to do it by hand just to show you. Okay, but we can do this in the calculator. So if I'm doing it by hand, Okay, I'm basically going to multiply the C plus 2 squared up, so it's going to be 2,700 equals 96.4286 times C plus 2 squared. Okay, then I'm going to divide by that 96.4286 on both sides. Get rid of the square, we're going to take the square root. And then to get C by itself, I'm going to subtract 2. So C is going to equal 3.2915, and that is months. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do this in the calculator, okay, I would put this one on Y1. And I would put this on Y2. And I would find where they, well, first I would fix my window. So I know I've got to get pretty big. And there it is, right in here. And now you can zoom box that if you want to. Once you get to there, you can zoom box that, get up here a little bit, because we want to find this intersection right here um, on the positive side, obviously. So enter, make me a box around that. And there it is. And then I would hit second trace intersect. And there it is, 3.2915, which is what I had as well when I solved it by hand. Okay, so either way works. All right. 
So moving on to our last example here, example number four. All right. A function f and g are differentiable. That is important. For all real numbers, and g is strictly increasing. Okay, so strictly increasing tells me that g prime is going to be greater than zero. All right, the table below gives values of the function and their first derivatives at selected values of x. The function h is given by the equation h of x equals f of g of x minus 6. Okay. So let's see what it says here. Find the equation of the tangent line. Ding, ding, ding. Here we are. We're thinking pot and sot. Drawn to the graph of h when x equals 3. Okay, so we've got x equals 3. So we want to do the pot and the sot when x equals 3. So for our pot, so we're going to do h of 3, which is right here. So we're going to plug in 3. So f of g of 3 minus 6. All right, so g of 3 is 4. So that's f of 4. f of 4 is negative 1. So that gives me negative 7. So my pot is 3, negative 7. All right, my sot is going to be h prime of x, which we know is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So h prime of 3 is going to equal f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. Alright, well, we already know that g of 3, we already talked about that, g of 3 is 4. g prime of 3 is 2, so times 2. So f prime of 4 is 3. 3 times 2 gives me 6. So my side is 6, my pot is 3, negative 7, giving me the equation y plus 7 is going to equal 6 times x minus 3. So there's the equation of the tangent line. Now we want to find the average rate of change of h over the interval 1, 3. Average rate of change, slope of the secant from 1 to 3. So that is h of 1 minus h of 3 over 1 minus 3. All right, well, let's see. I've got h of 3. I know h of 3 is negative 7, so I found that earlier, but I've still got to find h of 1. So let's do that real quick. So h of 1 is going to equal f of g of 1 minus 6. So g of 1 is going to be 2. Uh, f of 2 is going to be 9. And 9 minus 6 is going to give me 3. So now I can say h of 1 is 3 minus negative 7 over negative 2. 10 over negative 2 is negative 5. All right, now they want us to explain why there must be a value of r for 1, for r between 1 and 3, such that h of r equals negative 2. Well, let's see. So between 1 and 3. Well, h of 1 was negative, I'm sorry, h of 1 was 3, right? h of 1 was 3, and h of 3 was negative 7. So explain why there must be a value of r for r between 1 and 3 such that h of r equals negative 2. Well, negative 2 is right in there between 3 and negative 7. So we can say since h of x is differentiable, It is also continuous. 
on one three. So since h of r equals negative 2 is between h of 1 and h of 3, then the intermediate value theorem guarantees a value of r on the interval 1, 3 such that h of r will equal negative 2. All right, last problem. All right, explain why there is a value of c for c between 1 and 3 such that h prime of c equals negative 5. Well, h prime of c, remember, is our slope of the tangent. Okay. And that is equal to the slope of the secant from part B. Okay, so explain why there is a value of C for C between 1 and 3 such that H prime of C equals negative 5 or the slope of the tangent equals the slope of the secant here. Okay, now I'm going to write this little tidbit right here. This is obviously something you would not write. You have already established this, but I'm just going to make a little note of it. Okay, so when I'm explaining this, if I was writing this on my test, I would not include what I'm about to write. We've already established that it is continuous and differentiable. Okay, so we don't need to re-establish that in part D. Okay, you have already established that in previous sections of the same problem, so we don't need to, now if you did, it would be fine, but you don't have to, okay? So now that we've already established that, we can use that the mean value theorem guarantees a value of C on the interval one, three, such that H prime of C does equal negative 5 since we know negative 5 is the average rate of change for the interval 1, 3. And at this point, this is probably a lot of y'all. Okay? So again, you don't have to establish that it is, you don't have to restate that it's continuous and differentiable. You can, but you don't have to because it's already been established in a previous part of the problem. All right. Oh, man, I spelled change wrong. Sorry. All right. So now you will be responsible for your worksheet that applies to Test 6, Lesson 3, uh, and we will look at that um, in class tomorrow. All right. Have a wonderful day.